I'd like to welcome you today to our devotional in the book of Genesis. We are in Genesis chapter 15. In Genesis 15, we're going to see the covenant that God makes with Abram uh, in this particular passage. And uh, it is the Abrahamic covenant that is confirmed in the first seven verses of this chapter. And I want to look at the first three verses today after I give you some introductory thoughts. It says in Genesis 15, verse 1, After these things, the word of the Lord came unto Abram in a vision, saying, Fear not, Abram, I am thy shield and thy exceeding great reward. And Abram said, Lord God, what wilt thou give me, seeing I go childless? And the steward of my house is this Eleazar of Damascus. And Abram said, Behold, to me thou hast given no seed, and lo, one born in my house is is mine heir. So as we come into these verses, let me just give you a few thoughts, first of all, about God's covenants. Um, God's covenants are certified and they are dependable. In other words, what I'm saying is this, is that we know that when God covenants to something, even when God promises something, that God is a God that always keeps his word. Let me give you just a few examples today. There was after the... Um, a flood, there was a rainbow covenant. There was a covenant that was made with Noah that God said there would never be another worldwide flood. So the rainbow, as we look at the rainbow in this in that passage, the origin of the rainbow or the first mention of the rainbow is a reminder of God's judgment upon sin. And in that rainbow being seen after the flood, God is saying, I will not again judge the world because of sin by a worldwide flood. And of course, we know there have been local floods and that kind of thing, but there never has been a worldwide flood since the worldwide flood that was in Genesis chapter 6. God has kept his covenant. God has kept his promise. Also, there was a covenant that, is, that was given to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob regarding Israel and, and the land and all of that. And we see that God has kept his covenant and that God is going to fulfill his covenant to the letter of the law with them. And it's important for us to understand, friends, that no matter how bad things get, no matter uh, how awful the things in this world look, we need to remember that God is still on the throne, that God is still keeping his covenants, that God is a God that keeps his promises. And one of the reasons why God can is able to keep his promises is because of his supremacy. There is no one who is over him. There is no one who is supreme to him. And because of that, and because of the fact that there's nobody more, power, or more powerful than him, nobody is able to stay his hand. Nobody is able to thwart his purpose. So God, because of his supremacy, is able to keep his covenants. His love causes him to make those covenants. His love causes him to keep those covenants. And we know that his eternal purpose forms the foundation of his covenants. Behind all of the things that God covenants is the eternal purpose of our God. That what God desires to happen is going to happen in this world. Now with that in mind, I want us to look at the beginning of this Abrahamic covenant as it is confirmed with Abram in Genesis chapter 15 verses 1 through 7. In verses 1 through 3 today, I just want to give you a few thoughts about this today. We see here Abram's conversation with God. And the Bible tells us in verse 1 that after these things, God speaks to Abram. You say, after what things? Well, if you remember in Genesis chapter 14, the first recorded war is mentioned in the Word of God. And there we see Abram go and deliver Lot uh, from those who had taken him captive. And uh, it's important for us to know that, that God comes to him after that battle, after that time of trial, and he reassures him. Friends, isn't it a wonderful thing to know that in our time of testing, in our time of difficulty, that our Lord comes alongside of us, and that he speaks to us, and he encourages us, and he helps us, and he gives us just the word we need, just the promise we need for that very hour. And oh, friends, what a wonderful blessing it is to know that God is our 
refuge and strength, and that he's a very present help in trouble. And friends, God drives away fear. Abram, when he went out, and when he attacked these people, these uh, this, uh, these armies. He did not have to fret. He did not have to fuss. He did not have to worry because God was in control and he knew that God was in control and the presence of God drives away fear. Oh friends, when I'm fearful, it's a reminder of the fact and that I'm not living as close to God as I ought to be living. And the closer that I get to Him, the more that His presence in my life drives away fear. And friends, the reason why I don't need to be fearful is the fact that God is near and that God is our shield. Notice what it says in verse 1. It says, After these things the word of the Lord came unto Abram in a vision, saying, Fear not, Abram. I am thy shield. Why is it that Abram did not need to fear? Well, he had the presence of God, and God had told him that he would be Abram's shield. Now, a shield is a weapon of defense. And God is reminding Abram that if the kings pursued him, that God would be his shield. He had just got done pursuing these kings and taking back, back Lot and his families and, and the and the things that they possessed. And he's reminding him here, if these kings retaliate, if they come against you, Abram, you don't need the fear. You don't need the fret. I am thy shield. I am your defense. I will watch over you. I will take care of you. I will provide for you. And oh, friends, what a blessing it is to know the promises of God in our life. And friends, this shows us how little Abram needed the reward offered by the king of Sodom. Remember in Genesis Genesis 14, verses 21 and 22, the king of Sodom uh, offers Abram a reward. Friends, he doesn't need that reward. He has God as his reward. Notice what verse 1 says. Oh, friends, listen. After these things, the word of the Lord came unto Abram in a vision, saying, Fear not, Abram, I am thy shield and thy exceeding great reward. Friends, we don't need the things of this world. We have the Lord as our reward. We have a reward that is laid up for us in heaven where moth and rust doth not corrupt and where thieves do not break through and steal. And friends, we're going to be for all of eternity in his presence if you know him as your personal savior, if you've trusted him and him alone for your salvation. So we see in verse 1 that God speaks to Abram, and then in verses 2 and 3, we see that Abram speaks to God. In verses 2 and 3, we find a prayer of Abram. Notice what it says. Abram said, Lord God, what wilt thou give me, seeing I go childless? And the steward of my house is this Eleazar of Damascus. And Abram said, Behold, to me thou hast given no seed, and lo, one born in my house is mine heir. At the time, he is a steward, Eleazar, that is, his, that, is his, that is his heir. And Abram longs for a son. And Abram understands that heirship is based on sonship and sonship alone. And oh, friends, what a wonderful truth that is when we think about the fact that heirship is based on sonship. You say, what's so marvelous about that? Listen to Romans chapter 8, friends. Romans chapter 8, verses 16 and 17, it says, The Spirit itself beareth witness with our spirit, listen, friends, that we are the children of God. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God, and joint heirs with Christ, if so be that we suffer with him, that we may be also glorified together. Oh, friends, what a wonderful truth. Heirs. The Bible tells us here of God and join heirs with the Lord Jesus Christ. Let me give you one more verse today as we bring our study to a close for today. In Ephesians 1, verse 5, it says this, Having predestined us unto the adoption of children by Jesus Christ to himself, according to the good pleasure of his will. Then in verse 11, In whom also we have obtained an inheritance, being predestined according to the purpose of him who worketh all things after the counsel of his will. Friends, what a wonderful truth to, for us to realize and understand that we are heirs, that we are joint heirs with Christ. Friends, let's rejoice in the blessing of God 
upon our lives. Let's rejoice in the fact that God drives away fear, that he's promised to be our shield, and he's promised to be our exceeding great reward. And like in this passage, let's, let's be at a place that God can speak to us through his word and that we speak to him through prayer on a daily, continual basis. T tomorrow, we'll continue to look at God's covenant with Abram. Have a great day.